Hello and welcome back to another, albeit more echoey, episode of the Grace Lutheran Podcast. This is Pastor Matt Nupel. Thank you for tuning into our program today as we discuss different issues and topics about our faith and lives in Jesus Christ. And if you've been looking for a church that offers traditional Christ-centered worship in the Winston-Salem or Pofftown area, you are always invited to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 3410 Community Church Road, in Pofftown. Well, first, I just want to apologize for the significant uh, decrease in sound quality today. I'm currently away from the office, which means I'm also away from the microphone that I normally use for these episodes. Uh, but I think we are way past due for another podcast episode. And I think today's topic is especially relevant uh, just coming out of Veterans Day um, and this past Sunday, where a lot of churches uh, took time to celebrate uh, Veterans Day. There were actually two things that sparked my interest in wanting to talk about this topic today. Uh, first was a brief discussion that we had in Sunday school about our role as Christians in America, uh, specifically what that might look like in the future if we were to assume that the United States is going to continue distancing itself from any kind of ties to tradition or uh, religious views on morality. The second thing that sparked my interest was, uh, I'm currently recording this episode on Monday, uh, and this past Sunday was November 14th, the Sunday after Veterans Day. Uh, and so the next day after Sunday is when you get to catch up on what a lot of other churches did the day before with their service. And so as I was catching up on what other churches are doing, I noticed a lot of churches, uh, Lutheran churches, uh, decided to take this past Sunday uh, not to follow the traditional lectionary that we use, uh, but to instead uh, take this time to celebrate Veterans Day and to honor our veterans and our identity as citizens of the United States. Now, this isn't to gossip or to point fingers at other churches. Uh, it doesn't matter what synod they're a part of, doesn't matter what their name is. Uh, but I just want to show you a few examples of what I'm talking about. Uh, first, I saw a Lutheran church that included the American flag in their entrance and exit procession. Uh, this is the procession with the cross that we use at the beginning and end of every service. I saw multiple Lutheran churches that, instead of singing hymns, decided to sing our national anthems, like the Star Spangled Banner and God Bless America. There was one Lutheran church that, instead of reading passages of Holy Scripture, they read passages from our founding fathers, like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. And in one example that we're going to be talking about today, uh, there was one pastor who, in using Luke chapter 4, uh, interpreted the verse uh, to set at liberty those who are oppressed uh, to mean very clearly to bring democracy uh, to those who are oppressed. Now, I want to make very clear that I have been part of churches who have decided to celebrate Veterans Day or Memorial Day instead of the scheduled liturgical celebration for that Sunday. And they are full of people who love the Lord, who are dedicated and committed to their faith, so this isn't to criticize every single member um, of churches that made this decision to celebrate Veterans Day yesterday uh, instead of the scheduled 25th Sunday after Pentecost. But at the same time, I also feel a tremendous amount of responsibility to stand firm in the confession that there is a difference between being a patriot and idolizing one's own country above the kingdom of God. And in the United States, I believe the line between these two differences has become blurred. So this is the important difference that I want us to focus on in this episode today. Because I don't believe there's anything wrong or sinful or unbiblical about being patriotic for one's own country. To be thankful that you were born in the country that you were born in. To appreciate the rights that you're able to exercise in the country that you live in or to be thankful for the good things that your country has done throughout history. But at the same time, as Christians, as those who confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our King, we confess that we are part of a greater kingdom that far surpasses any kingdom of this world, and that includes the United States. I believe one of the reasons why this line gets blurred so quickly in the U.S. is because there seems to be this kind of default assumption among a lot of American Christians that God has this special, unique relationship with the United States that he doesn't have with any other country in the world. 
you know, God has blessed America in this unique way that he has not blessed those other countries. I think it is fair to say that God has blessed America with things that we have access to that other countries don't, with rights that we're allowed to exercise that other countries aren't allowed to exercise. So in that sense, I do believe that God has genuinely blessed us, but not in a way that is somehow better or more special than other worldly nations. There's only one nation in the Bible that God has had a special covenant relationship with, and that's the nation of Israel. Outside of that theology, uh, without getting into the whole Zionism debate, uh, there is no sense that God has some countries that he holds as favorites over others. But the kingdom of God as it reigns today is universal. It's all over the world, represented by many different nations. So when we gather for worship on Sunday mornings, we're not just gathering as our own individual Grace Lutheran Assembly in North Carolina, but we are joining ourselves to all Christians who are gathering in that same day and moment under the name of Christ as their Lord and their King. This is why it's helpful to see the divine service on Sunday mornings as our embassy of the kingdom of God. It's where we go to exit our earthly citizenship as Americans and to enter into our final citizenship of the kingdom of God. While it's not our final destination, it is the place where we go to receive the benefits of our citizenship, namely the forgiveness of sins offered in word and sacrament. This is why I requested that we remove the American flag out of our chancel space when we moved into our new church building. Because when we worship on Sunday mornings, we are not focused on our earthly citizenship, but our primary focus is on our citizenship of God's kingdom. To make this point of difference between patriotism and idolatry, I want to quote just a few passages from a German philosopher named Diedrich von Hildebrand. Um, this was a Catholic philosopher that lived during the end of Hitler's reign, and he was very critical of the Nazi party, uh, but he also considered himself a very strong German patriot. I want to first read how Hildebrand defines patriotism. <coughs> Hi, Pixie. Uh, and so that... <sighs> Hang on. So first, I want to read how Hildebrand defines patriotism in his work, The Christian Corporative State. Uh, and so this is what he says. Uh, real patriotism, he writes, uh, is a special sense of belonging to the nation of which one is a member. Love for the divine idea this particular nation represents. A special familiarity and solidarity with this idea gratitude for everything that one receives from it, a special understanding one possesses for it, and finally the task that is given through belonging to it. Even though we of course confess that God is primarily concerned with his own kingdom, we don't deny that God has ordained and plays an active role within the kingdoms of this world. It's only by the grace of God that sinful human beings can come together on a large scale and agree upon particular rules and particular ways to live together as one people. And this is what I believe Hildebrand means by the sacred character of national communities. And so for us as citizens of the United States, to be a true patriot is to see how God does play an active role within our country of the United States. But this also includes a deep sense of the responsibility this places on us. Because as Hildebrand says, this includes the task that is given through belonging to this national community. So for Hildebrand, a true Christian American patriot is going to see the divine character of our country and see how we can further that same divine idea, not only across our own nation, but across the world. By divine idea, this doesn't mean American-flavored democracy or our unique American culture being brought to people across the world. Uh, but it's deeper than that to mean what are the divine principles that our nation was founded upon and grew out of. And I think when we get to the core of that idea, it's primarily the belief that all human beings are created by God with certain rights and are created as equals. 
This doesn't mean that there aren't other countries that also uplift and affirm these things. And it doesn't mean that we are the only country that has this same divine idea or something similar to it. But what it does mean is that this is our divine idea as the United States. And so as a national community that has agreed upon this fundamental principle, uh, what do we do with that now? And how do we further that to the glory of God's kingdom above our own kingdom? So now let's see how Hildebrand defines the other side of this, the idolatry of nation or fake patriotism. Uh, Hildebrand says that in the worst form, uh, this can be seen as committing idolatry towards a nation, uh, that is making the nation the highest criterion for the whole of life and making it the ultimate and highest good. It regards the unity of the nation as the ultimate and most vital bond of community. Now, to be clear, Hildebrand is not saying that it is wrong to call a nation good, or that it is wrong to see a nation's unity as important for the preservation of the people of that nation. But what he is saying is that making this the highest criterion of good, and making it the ultimate and most important or vital bond of community. As Christians, we would say that the ultimate and most vital bond of community is Christ. Another danger that this creates, according to Hildebrand, is turning the individual into a byproduct of the group or nation to which they belong. Uh, in other words, basically judging a person based on where they're from and not based on their God-given character and value. Hildebrand goes on to write this. Anyone who does not see in other persons, first and foremost, a soul created by God and for God, has already succumbed to this idolatry. And the same is true of the one who sees a German, a Frenchman, or Italian first, rather than a human being with whom they share a profound connection through their great shared destiny, which encompasses birth, death, personal creatureliness, and the ordination toward eternity. As someone who had personal interactions with the Nazi party, Hildebrand understands firsthand how this idolatry of one's own nation can make a person racist or xenophobic. As if to say, well, because you are not part of my country or my people, then you are somehow less as a human being. But hopefully by now you recognize that for Hildebrand, real American patriotism would consist of seeing every individual person, regardless of what race they are or where they're from in this world, seeing every individual as created by God and having equal worth and value. Finally, Hildebrand argues that real patriotism recognizes and respects the existence of other countries and sees how God actively works through their national community. Uh, this is what Hildebrand writes. Every man, whatever their race, is created by God and after his image. Every person has an immortal soul destined for eternal communion with God. Race, according to Catholic doctrine, is a quite secondary and accidental biological factor having no effect upon the possibility of man's attaining his eternal end, since the values he is called upon to exemplify are by no means determined by race. Men as such are equal before God. All are fallen in Adam. All are redeemed in Christ. Even though Hildebrand's writing and context deal specifically with the ideas of race between Jew and German Gentile, I believe these ideas still apply to us today as the United States. Even though we are a melting pot of different races and different cultures, there is a tendency for us to see our identity as Americans as the most important aspect about who we are. I think this leads into what I was talking about earlier with how we understand the biblical idea of liberty. In a lot of passages in Holy Scripture, we see that God declares liberty to his captives and that he brings freedom to those who are in bondage.
But I want to make very clear in this podcast episode that those ideas of freedom or liberty, those are very different from what the United States founding documents, like the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, what they mean by freedom and liberty. When the Bible talks about God granting us liberty or freedom, that means freedom from sin, freedom from our own will apart from God's will, and freedom from death. But when the United States Constitution or other founding documents use this word freedom, what they normally mean is freedom from a tyrannical government or freedom to live the individual personal life that I want to live for myself. And that's a very different idea than what God is bringing to us through Jesus Christ. As someone who served in the United States Navy for five years, and as someone who has served on a funeral detail for at least 20 different funerals, um, I understand and I appreciate very deeply what our country means and what the American flag represents. If we're to consider the definition of patriotism that we've talked about today, I would consider myself a very strong and a very proud patriot of the United States. I love this country. I am deeply thankful for the rights that we are able to exercise in this country. But as the book of Ecclesiastes teaches us, there is a time and a season for everything. And so I believe very strongly that there is a time for us to express our patriotism of the United States. And there's a time for us to express our much more vital and much more important patriotism of the kingdom of God. This is why, as a Lutheran pastor, I will not allow an American flag in our chancel. I will not allow an American flag in our entrance or exit procession where the cross of Jesus Christ is meant to be prominent. And I will not allow anything outside of God's holy word to be read during our scheduled lectionary readings. The easiest way for any church to fall into the idolatry of a nation that Hildebrand was warning against is to co-mingle the kingdom of God with the kingdom of this world. I hope this episode has given you a lot to think about when it comes to what it means to be a Christian patriot in America today. But it looks like that's going to be all the time we have. But thank you so much for tuning into our program. Please feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or any other comments about our content today. Uh, but until we see you next time, uh, we hope you have a great rest of your week. Take care and God bless.